Uh, this airplane is almost all fiberglass. It's got some carbon fiber in it, but it's a lot of it is contact layups. You know what those are? No, no vacuum bagging. None of this airplane, it has oven here. We didn't have time to set up and do oven cure stuff. We did a lot of bag stuff, but that was it. So it was pretty much old school. So anyway, let me, uh, let me go, first of all, when you get a program started, it's usually Doug that comes up with a name for it, because it's more clever. I had a name for it myself. I wanted to call it Blast. Blast. Burp's last airplane starts tomorrow. <laughs> Anybody got any other ideas? Because this was an in-house research and develop program, you know, you in the industry call those IRAD. I got, I think from Doug also, it's Rutan's aeromotive design. And because the program was justified based on being able to train new shop people to build airplanes real quick. Remember, 31st of March, I'm out of here. Uh, the real justification for doing it was shop training. So Doug also, I think, wanted to call the program training, which means take Rutan and implement new, interesting, non-traditional goals. <laughs> That's kind of cool. But I'm not too long. <laughs> How many here know what the White Knight 2 is called at Mojave? What's it called? T-Top. T-Top, what, which is short for? Triceratops. Triceratops. You know, the three horns? That is, if you have spaceship too, that's three horns. Anyway, we call it T-Top. So anyway, Doug thought this program ought to be D-Top, Delta Top, which is drive to Oshkosh, Probably. <laughs> I changed that to drive to Oshkosh proudly and, uh, and almost uh, almost sold that, but not good. So anyway, we've got a big problem. I mean, hell, we've got to build this airplane fast without a name yet. You can't start till you have a name. <laughs> Trying to configure it, I couldn't come. 
come up with something that I like. It kept looking like a bolt tailor or looking like a Thanos airplane. And uh, I decided that if I could incorporate hybrid technology, hybrid electric technology, and drive the propeller with a motor just a little bit bigger than your fist that could put out 20 horsepower, the ones that the model airplane guys are using. Actually, the two versions of that, the Turnigy and the Hacker. Hacker is made in Germany. Turnigy is made in China. And when I got a hold of one of those motors, I think I had to clean my shorts. I mean, this thing is so wonderful. It's, it, it, it's little. It can direct drive a propeller. It weighs less than six pounds. <laughs> and for short bursts, you can put out 20 horsepower with this thing. And you put out the same power at any altitude. And I'm thinking, holy bananas, scatter a few of those around the airplane, and you can do something different configuration wise. And put another one on the wheels to drive your car. So you got to generate electricity. This business of an all electric airplane doesn't make any sense, and it won't until batteries get 10 or 20 times as good as they are now. And I don't. I don't know when that maybe it'll be next month. <laughs> but anyway, so I envisioned something where you take four stroke liquid cooled motorcycle engine, do two of them, use them to nothing to do but drive generators that charge these batteries. And then you run off the batteries to drive your propellers or your wheels. And that the airplane would not taxi with the propellers turning, it would only it would drive out with wheel power on the runway. It would start accelerating with wheel power, and then you turn the props on, and you got wheels plus propeller power, and you get a burst of about seven seconds of that, and you're off the ground. Okay? That's cool. All right? Then you cruise on propeller power. And uh, if you're flying along, and you have a twin engine failure, Let's say you're dumb enough to run out of gas on one side and you throw a rod on the other side. You've lost your gas propulsion that's redundant, fully redundant. You lost both of them. Well, what do you do in a twin when you lose both engines? Fly. You hope that your first choice for landing is going to work. If you're a little short, a little long, you're screwed. But the neat thing about the electric hybrid, in my mind, was that, hey, if both the gas engines fail, why, you can pick out a field and make an approach to it. If you're going to be short, no big deal. Use a little battery to get there. And if you're going to be long, no big deal. Go around the downwind and pick another field and be able to do that twice just on the batteries. And I thought, well, you talk about a safe airplane. That's a safe airplane. You've got four times redundancy on the motors, you know, and you can lose both gas engines, and you can still go around. I thought, that's neat. And another thing that's neat about it, if you put that much battery in to allow you to do a go around the downwind and back, that battery will drive your car about 30, 35 miles as an all-electric car. Now, I drove an all-electric car for seven years. How many here drove an EV1 before General Motors took them away from us? Cool car, right? Didn't you love it? Wouldn't you like to have it again with lithium batteries? Oh, it was that. Anyway, the electric car then, in the neighborhood and in town, is an all-electric car that's perfectly quiet. And you get out on the freeway, or highway, you push a button, fire up your gas engines, and be able to get, you know, seven or eight hundred miles on 18 gallons of gas. Uh, that's a cool car. The big risk, though, was something as light as it needs to be for an airplane. And an airplane's going to be stable directionally. Hell, if a car jumps off the ground in a stable direction, it'll turn into the wind and then land sideways. So that's no good. You know, you've got to get rid of some tail on a car. And you've got to keep the CG far enough forward so that it'll be stable as a car, but it won't rotate as an airplane. So the solution for that was put a lot of propeller power back here on the tail. By the way, the latest configuration of it has all the power, four-bladed props. 
back on the tail, not on the wing. You blow the tail with all your power and you can rotate. Another thing, you know how a, a motorcycle guy rotates and goes up on his rear wheel? There's a lot of gas in it. So you give your wheels a, a real good blast, short duration blast of power, and it'll help you rotate. So you've got something that you've got two ways to rotate, even though the CG is way too far forward uh, to rotate as a normal airplane. Anyway, that's the basic concept. And I'm going to master some slides here and show you the program. <coughs> Okay, I talked about justifying it based on propulsion technician, shop training. <coughs> Big deal is to find the ground safety of a new configuration. I wanted to demonstrate how we used to work in the old days uh, to the new engineers. You know, they do everything with CAD. They don't even know how to run a slide group. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to work a lot with them before I retired. The goal on the program that we finished, by the way, this airplane made its first flight the day before I retired. <laughs> and it did because we were a month behind schedule. Uh, we wanted to investigate the rotability of something that was actually a real airplane, not one of these things that will drop like a rock when you're flying. A real airplane. And that was the schedule. I talked about the program name. Okay, these next three charts are not what the airplane does, because it hasn't been flight tested in phase two as an airplane. And I'll tell you right up front, what we found is it can't do all this stuff. I'm not very smart on electric propulsion. And I took a pretty simple look at this, and I said, well, you lose about 10% in a generator, generating electricity. And you lose another 10% when you send energy to electric motor to drive a propeller. So old dummy Burke just put in those two losses. And he also assumed that we could get a good low drag airplane with gear towards the whole works. You know, that aspect ratio is pretty good for a flying car. Isn't it? But uh, if you could do that, you get this wonderful performance and you can get this wonderful stove capability. But I've got to tell you what we learned on phase one. When Brett came in and says, we've got other losses here. Okay, stuff that I didn't consider. And I've got to just tell you up front that this airplane will not perform, I don't think, as well as it was claimed in Aviation Week, or as it's claimed in these first three slides. But for what it's worth, I kind of sold the program to Doug based on it to do all these cool things. <laughs> <laughs> now, we don't know how well it'll do until we test it, and we haven't tested it yet. Tim, Tim. Uh, I don't think scale, I think scale will be looking for a customer to pay the bills for phase two. Anyway, it does this neat stuff, 35 miles on battery. Uh, what else is up there that you should know about? Real short STOL. Okay, here's the airplane configuration. By the way, the gross weight, just by coincidence, is essentially the same as the gross weight of a long easy. It's got a lot less fuel though. Doesn't have the range of a long easy. Obviously nothing has the range of a long easy. It's only got 18 gallons of gas, 9 gallons per side, but it has about the same gross weight as a long easy. 31.8 foot span. Uh, what else should I say about it? Oh, the pilot flies in the right cockpit. You get in the right cockpit, you think you're in a long easy. You got rudder right pedals, when you get the full travel, you're on the master cylinder for the wheel brake. That's what a long easy does. That master cylinder is off the motorcycle, by the way, because the brakes and wheels are off the motorcycle. If you get into the left cockpit, you think you're in a car. You have a steering wheel. Now, it's a spiffy looking carbon fiber steering wheel, but it's a steering wheel. Okay? You got no rudder pedals. 
you got a brake pedal. You don't have a gas pedal. We think it's okay to teach a car, a guy that drives, to use a hand product. A lot of experience has shown that that works. But if you take away a brake pedal, you got problems because the guy that drives the car, if a, if a, if a, somebody darts out in front of them, instinctively they don't think about it. They go to a brake pedal, and that's a safety issue. So we had to have a brake pedal. 